Welcome to Soulful Conversations with Najeda. I'm Najeda Shaputo. I love to dance. I am passionate about social justice, nature, spiritual growth, and making a difference, specifically empowering women around the world and embracing their authentic self and showing up as their authentic self through their message. As a coach, I empower women, purpose-driven women, coaches and other online entrepreneurs, and I help them experience ease, confidence, clarity, and fun in their business by discovering their message and finding their niche. I am so excited about my guest today. My guest today is Misty Patrea. She is a transformational coach for entrepreneurs. She helps with, she helps helpers, coaches, healers, chiropractors, helpers to create successful businesses in alignment with their loving heart and their powerful mission. I love that. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me today, Missy. Missy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was so exciting that we could make this happen. I know it is definitely. And she's actually on a retreat in, um, in Ireland. Well, I, where, where are you again? I'm in Cork. I'm in Cork. It's the second largest city in Ireland. And yes. uh, yes. it's where the Annika, the leader of our <laughs> retreat lives. So yes. we're at this yes. amazing farmhouse out in the middle of the country. It is well, I just had a massage today. So let me just tell you, it's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And actually, I interviewed Anika. I think she was my third or mm -hmm. second episode when I started this. And she was pretty instrumental in me getting this going. And um, so awesome. So Misty, I know you're all about, and I love how you help these, you know, helpers, coaches, chiropractors, like healers, yeah. really you help them be in alignment so that yeah. they can really show in your business. And I know for you, you're all about self-care and you really believe that the best way that we can really make a difference and show up in our businesses and make an impact is being, is coming from a, from a place where our cup is full. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's easy for, um, entrepreneurs to want to push themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That's a thing. That's but when, we do. Right? We're like, us all, right? No. But if you are a helper, if you're working in people's energy all day, I don't care if you're hands-on, meaning you're like a massage therapist or a chiropractor. I don't care if you are a light worker. I don't care if you're a coach. I don't care. You know, it really doesn't matter. If you're working in energy all day long as a helper, that's what we do. And you don't take care of yourself first, all kinds of boo-boo happens. All kinds of bad things happen. So it's really, it's like, I, I use this analogy all the time. It's like Michael Jordan thinking he could be the basketball, best basketball player in the whole world and never shooting shots every day, never working out, never, it's the same thing. You yeah. can't be an energy worker in any way and not take care of this. Yeah. All kinds of things happen. I mean, it affects, if you're not, you take on other people's stuff, problem number one. Then you start like worries about money, all your, all your stuff starts to show up. And when that happens, that makes your business too all kinds of problems. <laughs> totally, no, totally. And you know what? I was just thinking about something because I've seen that especially in my work. Um, and I think, I mean, I know even for me, I've experienced it, but I also think that when you specifically not living your message or not living what you're doing, you exactly when you gave the best, the thing about Michael Jordan, you really feel like a fraud. Because sometimes we yeah. feel because yes. our ego is telling us, but when you are actually not walking the talk, you know, and that's what I think, I feel like that's what you said in a way, like yes. basically, you know, and I think, and that's why you can't really show up. And I think that's why your energy is like low. There's something and well, you're out of alignment. Yes, you're totally out of alignment. And the reality is, is that when people want to be helpers, they're so happy to help. They're like, yes. I will sacrifice myself because I need to help, right? And yes. that is not a sustainable long-term, you know, I look at having a business as like an energetic marathon. 
right? You can sprint every once in a while, but you can't sprint your way through a marathon, right? You can't hustle your way through your entire business. So, you know, if we, <laughs> if we stop that self-care and, and like you said, not walk our talk, I mean, that's usually when I get people. They're like, I'm not making money. I'm unhappy. I'm this, I'm this, I'm not, I'm not. Like the list of things. And it always starts with self-care. Always. Totally. No, it's yeah. very true. It's very, yeah. very true. So tell me, um, what, what do you notice that why do we, I think, would you say women, we do it a lot more? Well, I would say I tend to work with a lot of women helpers. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure. I can't really speak from a, a I know. the men coaches out there in the world. Right. So I hope well, that my audience that. are women. So we're right. You know, we're I happen to serve a lot of women. And like I said before, we're so happy to like sacrifice ourselves for others. That is why not, do we, why do you think we do that? Where do you think that? I think it's in our like nature that? of being a helper. Like it, it, on some level it is really personally satisfying for me mm -hmm. to see someone else grow right yeah and women are also you know this is we're getting a little stereotypical here but women are also the nurturers right like that's technically we are, we are. Role, right it's not always the role women take but that's the one that's like our you know quote unquote role and even women with their own children will like give and give and like you know or from themselves before they'll go eat. It's a, I'm, you know, I don't know why we do it. I, on some level, I think it's like a, I think our egos identify with it. Like I can sacrifice myself. And so someone else can live better. And that's not okay. It's just mm -hmm. not, right? Yeah. I mean, people probably will put me on the cross for this, but you know, I don't really think Jesus should have sacrificed himself either, right? We, we could have used him for a lot longer than he was around. So I think that this like martyrdom, this, I'm so, I, 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 if I sacrifice myself for someone else, that makes me, I don't know, good? <laughs> Maybe that's where it comes from. I don't know. I don't actually know from no, one. Because I grew up, I grew, I grew up in Haiti, and I have to say, I remember growing up, and we would go out to, you know, we would go to family members and friends for dinner, and I would notice this thing with women, with the women, you know, the married women, including my mom, where they would like the guys would just sit there. The, the husband were sitting and talking and when the food was ready and the women would go, like the men were served first. And it's like, that's yeah, patriarchal food. society right there. I mean, now you're talking about patriarchal society. Yes. They would like prepare their food for them or, you know, or it's sort of like this, this whole thing of like, and you even notice some women even do it with their brothers where it's like catering to them and, and basically before they even eat themselves, it's like, so totally, I think in some way, it's sort of like this thing of like, and in some way, it's almost like we almost, I don't know, it kind of sends a message that we think we're less than in a way too. Right? Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, we could chalk it up to patriarchal society. I'm really not sure. I don't know why we do it. I, I wish I did. I, yeah. I stop it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Right. But I think part of the process of that is just educating people that it doesn't have to be that way. It just totally. doesn't. Especially, totally. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in business for yourself or not. If you find yourself at the end of the day completely exhausted caring for others in any way, you've got to fill back up. How patient can you be? with someone that you're caring for. If you are exhausted, how loving, how present can you be? As a coach, I, if I'm not taking care of myself, I can't be as good of a coach. I can't be as present. I can't be as there. I can't track the thoughts because I get lost because I'm exhausted. And oh. that messes with my business. That messes with the people that I could, I'm serving and that's not okay. It's just not okay. Totally, totally. No, I, I totally get you. Now, let me ask you, Misty. 
for you, did you always think that way? Did you struggle? No. No, 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 I did not always think that way. I did not. I was a sufferer myself, right? But I kept, I actually bumped into it in my business. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't like on a personal level, like when I was married, it wasn't that. It was, I, I bumped into it in my business. And I realized every time I stopped, you know, I'm a big meditator. Not everyone has to meditate. I don't even meditate. I don't even care what your self-care routine is. I happen to be a big meditator because that cleans my energy out the best way. That's my thing, right? Yeah. Um, but if I don't meditate on the regular, like things, like I, I, I get really, I get really triggered by things, totally even by right. my clients. And if I'm getting triggered by my clients, what? What? That is not okay. If anyone watching this finds yourself getting triggered by your clients, you need self care. Huge sign right? If you are doing your work, you're like in the Facebook or you're making a video or whatever, and you're getting triggered by other people and their messages and stuff, time for self-care. <laughs> so I, my, my own energy getting knocked around, like be, being triggered, that's actually how I figured that out. Mm -hmm. And I tested it on myself. I watched it happen. And then every time, if, if I like don't meditate for two or three days in a row, I, I just can't, my, it affects so much of my life. I'm triggered by my relationships. Like if somebody says something, I'm like, wait, what? You know, like I'll get really reactionary instead of like letting them have their own experience. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, so, yeah, that's how I figured it out. I actually, you know, figured it out for myself. Now I have coaches who helped me like, you know, explore my self-care needs, mm -hmm. but I, I literally bumped into it into my own work. And when I was early, I've been doing, I've been coaching for about six years now. And so in about year two, I really struggled. I was really struggling making money. I was really struggling being seen um, and I was really struggling with like who I was actually trying to talk to. And, mm -hmm. and so all of these things, it just, I kept bumping into them and I kept bumping into them and it was so frustrating. Yeah. And I felt so reactionary all the time. I, 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 it became very clear. And as soon as I, I do mindfulness meditation, that's actually my thing. And as soon okay. as I started doing that, I was like, oh, there's space, there's yeah. space between things. Totally, it totally. It took my work to like a whole nother level. It really did. Yeah, no, I love that. So let me ask you, um, because I know for, you know, I mean, it could be meditation and maybe there's, other, you know, obviously I know there's other stuff. Like mm -hmm. some people, it's visual, visualization. For some people, going for a walk, you know. I also, for me, dancing is another thing that I do. And let me tell you, when I haven't danced in a while, I can sense it. Like oh, it's, yeah, I know it, it, right? Just like when I don't meditate, when I don't, when I exactly, what, that's why when you shared about not being, you know, having meditated, when I haven't meditated in a few days, I can, like, I'm off. I'm totally off. Like, I start feeling off and things start bothering me. I'm like, <laughs> grouchy, you know, and same right. thing with, so I'm curious for you, or maybe, you know, did you, when you realized that and you started implementing and making sure that you're doing your meditation or all that, but were there, did you get, did you bump into any type of struggle, like having that regular routine or something? Oh, like yes. I don't know, because I want you to share that because I know, you know, many of us struggle with that, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say anytime you're thinking about adding self-care in, to your life in a way you haven't before. I don't care if it's running. Like you said, it doesn't even really matter. What I mean, so, let me just talk about what I mean by self-care real quick. When I'm talking yeah. about self-care, I mean anything that puts you back in your body, yeah. cleans out your energy field, right? So you're not carrying stuff from like the day before um, and gets you relaxed and calm. That could be anything from running to sleeping, to sleeping literally guys, literally. Okay. Any, anything like that. Okay. Cause again, we're working in people's energy all day long. So clearing that energy back out is so important. Okay. So that's what I mean by self-care. 
um, it's really defined by you. There's no official definition, okay? Mm -hmm. um, anything that feels nurturing, really, okay? And that's a hard word for a lot of people, like, I don't need to be nurtured. Yes, you do, okay? Anyway, so when, when, I, when I started mine, the thing is mostly about being kind to yourself about it. Like, for me, baby steps. When I started meditating, you guys, literally, anyone watching this, I started with one minute. Yes. One minute a day. And I was like, I did my minute. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I did my minute, right? And I, like, celebrated that. And then throughout the day, I, like, checked. Do I feel any different? Am I seeing any results? Da -da -da -da. How was that? And then the next day, and then do a minute a day for like a week. I love that, Misty. And I just feel successful. Yes, it's about feeling sick. This is not about punishing yourself. It's not because Misty said so or Najeda said so. You know what I mean? It's, it's something that you sort of need to like test for yourself and pick something that sounds fun. You dance, that is perfect, right? Perfect. I did my 10 minutes or five minutes of dancing, whatever it is. No, totally. Yeah. Me, but what do you say to somebody? Because this is what I noticed that people struggle with. Like, you know, it's like when you tell someone, because I don't know, I'm sure you've experienced that with clients and other people too, you know, where, you know, I know for me, when I tell people, okay, like people are like, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. And I'm like, okay, you're new to this. How long are you meditating? And they're like 15 minutes. I'm like, if you're not somebody who's been meditating for a long, because really the person who meditates for 15 minutes is somebody who has sort of like, you know, who's been doing it for a while. Build up, yeah. Uh, because they build it up. So I'm like, don't do 15 minutes. Do a minute. And same thing, it's kind of like, you know how people have never been to the gym? and right. they tell you, Or they haven't been in years or they're struggling with it and they tell you, yeah, I'm going to work out five days a week. Um, no not being realistic, which is what, you know, we set ourselves up for failure and then we beat ourselves up. So what do you say to the person who says, Misty, a minute? Like, what's that going to do? It's like when you tell somebody, start working out once a week. You know what I mean? Because if it's... Yeah, absolutely. So what do you tell them? Because people think, that's one of the things sometimes people don't think that really it's the consistency. It's not the actual duration. It's the... It's exactly are, how right. Are you being about it? Right. It's exactly right. Because mostly it's, and again, it doesn't matter what you do. You can meditate, you can run, you can, it doesn't matter, right? You can swim. I don't care. Okay. But what it is about is getting back in your body every day for however long it is. It just doesn't really matter how long. You're so right. It's more about doing it over a period of time. And if anyone is interested in meditating and they're unsure of how to start because just like sitting there and closing your eyes if you don't know what you're doing because acti actually meditation is a fairly active thing even though it looks like you're not doing anything <laughs> so i say if you're interested in that there's some amazing online services that can help you like calm.com is my favorite i i actually use calm.com all the time it's an app on my phone i have it on my phone right now um i listened to it this morning huh I don't yeah. know it. Oh, yeah. calm.com. Calm.com is one and Headspace is another one. I like calm.com okay. just because I like the girl that talks her voice. She's, okay, I okay. think she's from Toronto. I think she's Canadian. And I okay. just, she's got this really sweet, like girl next door kind of voice. And I just like her. And there's okay. all okay. these, you can meditate for one minute and she guides you through it. You can meditate for two hours and she'll guide you through that. And there's okay. all different kinds of meditations. So mm -hmm. if you, you are, if you happen to be interested in meditating and you are like, but what do I do? Try out an app, see what your friends have done. Um, go on YouTube. <laughs> There's a million meditations on there for free. So if that's something you're I know. interested in, that's my way in. And um, again, it, like Najeda said, it's not about how long you do it. It's about over time if you do it consistently. And guys, I look at it like this. For me, I think I said this before already, but it's like brushing your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth every day, the fur builds up, you know, like it gets loose in there, right? That happens with this. 
Mm-hmm. It does. Mm-hmm. It builds up other, especially when you're in other people's energy all day long. If you're totally. a psychologist, if you're a therapist, if you're a coach, a healer, what have you, you are literally in other people's energy all day long. Yes. Yeah. Totally. That stuff sticks. It's not like you walk away and you're done. Here's how you know if you're feeling sticky or if you are building up. Are you thinking about a client after the call? At all. Okay. Are you like, oh, I wonder if she, how's she doing? Is she okay? Right. If you are really reactionary and you're not sure why, if you're feeling really sensitive or raw, these are all signs that your energy is not clean. If you're having a hard time relaxing, your energy is not clean, okay? And so again, how good can you be if you're carrying around your client's stuff from four days ago? Yeah, that's true. It really does affect us. And we pretend like it doesn't, right? Because we're in this physical world and it's all physical and real. But energy is also really real. Totally. You know, energy is everything. And, you know, I mean, that's one thing I have to say that, you know, you know, people, you can really pick up, even on Facebook, I often say that I pick up the energy that people are posting from. Oh, yes. Especially because we're all women and there's really only like five actual people on Facebook. I'm convinced there's only five people on Facebook. They have like 10,000 million different names, but it's only five people. I swear. <laughs> and when you say five, like, what do you mean? Have you, do you have like different traits? No, I just mean it feels like you bump into the same people over and over mm-hmm. and over again, right? Okay. So like, even if we haven't met, like you and I have never yes. in person met, but I feel like I know you because you're amazing. And we've been doing some things together, right? Like we were in a yes, program yes. together. Now yes. we're doing this, right? So totally, like those yeah. things, like, yeah, absolutely. Totally. So I just think Facebook is like a really small world. That's all I mean by that. Yeah, no, totally, totally get that. No, I, I totally <laughs> get you because it's true. It is very true. Like energy is everything. And that's why, you know, that's one thing I've learned is that because I used to be like, I would post because I feel like I have to post. But now I post not only when I feel that, okay, I need to be like, okay, I want to post, I'm inspired to post, but also if, if I'm like, oh, well, I haven't posted today or I've only posted once and I want to post, but you know what, if my energy isn't feeling good, if I'm tired or if I feel like I'm doing it because I have to do it or I'm upset about something or whatever, or feeling a certain way, I don't because I know that because I, I sense people's energy. Your energy arrives before you do. Everyone, everyone. Some people are more sensitive to reading that energy, right? Like you're sensitive, so am I, to be able to tell what's going on with someone when you see them or when you read their post. But no matter with your, whether you're sensitive about it or not, your energy always arrives before you do, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can just tell. Yeah. I totally agree with you, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And- yeah. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. And if you, if you are funky, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling low, if you're feeling whatever, you're attracting that energy to you, right? So totally. like, do you have the clients you really want? Like, are you getting the clients who are like, I don't have enough money. I really like you, but those rates are too expensive. I would tell you right now that you're not taking care of yourself. Because you attract, like attracts like. That is a universal law. We cannot change it. It is not a law made by humans. Okay? It's a real thing. So, again, that stuff affects our work. Totally. Totally, totally, totally. Yes. So tell me, Misty, what are your thoughts on women empowerment? What are my thoughts on women empowerment? Ooh, I like that question. Um, Well, I sort of have two opposing views. I think that it's like, I think it's like a, what's the word? An oxymoron. Okay. Because to assume that you aren't empowered would be pretty much not true. Um, But I think it's absolutely necessary that we do it. You know what I mean? We assume, I think the frustration I have is that we assume we're powerless. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why I think it's an oxymoron. We are empowered. We are powerful. We just think we're not. But because we think we're not, I think it's an essential thing that we do. There's Mm -hmm. no, that's my work in the world. It's what I do. It 
heard me. It, uh, I think it brings me more joy than anything I've done in my life. Do I wish I d had to do it? No, I wish we all felt empowered. Me too, right? Like I have my I know, own thing. Right? I wish we just owned our stuff in the same way that men do. I, it's something that I'm like, man, that's awesome that they do that. I think it's great that men like step into their power in such a way. I oh, think it's yeah. something that we don't. You know, and I, you know, as you said that, it got me thinking and I, you know, how, you know, I see how men step into their power men own their work but yeah. women we don't we really don't it's almost as if you know it's like we're, we have to apologize for for being great it you know we have to apologize for owning our work and it's 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 like how many times here's a perfect example how many times have you wanted to post something that happened to you that was amazing but you almost didn't because you're like, oh, I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Maybe. Or oh, I don't want them to think I, I think I'm all that. Yes. Ah! Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I remember reading each stuff. other too. I don't want anyone else to feel bad. Like if some, like, man, I had this banging month and I got 40 clients. Oh, but I don't, what if someone else didn't get clients? I don't want them to feel bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I remember reading, reading somewhere how, um, I mean, obviously we're, you know, many of us are entrepreneurs, but then some people are still have their nine to five doing oh, their yeah. business on the side. They were saying how men, they'll apply for a position. When they look at the qualifications, they don't have everything. Right. They'll still go ahead and apply for it. Where yeah. women, they, you know, it's the same thing. Let's say we're, we want to go, we want to, you know, submit a blog post. Exactly. Or we want to submit, we want to pitch ourselves to a podcast and we're looking at their requirements. A man may not be like, oh, well, I don't have that. I don't have that. But you know what? This is, this is, this. I have one thing. Don't go and submit that post or send that yeah. resume. Where us women, we have to have every single one. So we true. Before we think we're qualified when, and we're going to be, you know, people are going to consider us for the position, people are going to consider us for their podcast and their blog. Yeah, to speak at their event where, you know, it's like they're, they're a lot more bold than we are. Yes. You know? And that's been, I mean, you could say a million reasons why, but that's been encouraged for centuries right that is true so that i think true. it's we're finally in a time and maybe it's happened before and i just wasn't alive for it but we're in a time where like that's balancing out a little bit don't you think like yeah totally it is it, to, like it, it, tip the scales yeah. back a little bit totally because you know what you're seeing more women being um getting educated you're mm -hmm. seeing more women you know i think owning businesses more women in business you know, actually, I, I saw More women in leadership roles in business too. Like for those people who are watching her a corporate, there's, I mean, there's a lot of work to do in the corporate yes. world in terms yes. of women leadership. Okay. We have a lot of headway to make there, but yes. there's a lot of space too, because it's all dudes. So like, I highly encourage you if you're in a corporate world, please keep moving up. We need yes. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you saw Jen Scalia's post. I think it was Friday or something where she talked about how when she goes to those speaking events, it's right. more, there are more men speaking. Oh, yeah. What's with that? That's Why totally are we putting true. ourselves out there to speak at those right. events? That's you really know? true. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's crazy. And it's frustrating. Yeah. I, I hope we... I think, we're, I think we're slowly getting there. Yeah. I think I'm really seeing it. Um, yeah, I think I'm really seeing it a lot more. So I'm hopeful, you know, I'm very hopeful. Yeah. Because actually, I was thinking about it the other day. We're saying how... Sorry, the sun got in my eyes. Okay, there oh, we go. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it the other day. I mean, um, where sometimes maybe we tend to focus on sort of like what's missing, but what's already, what's there. And I think that in some way, we do have a lot of work to do but I can see that it's, it's different than it was years ago. You know? Yes, it we, absolutely we're, is. We're building our way up there. Yeah. Just think about our moms, right? 
I mean, yeah, definitely. So totally different. Yeah. So tell me, what are your thoughts on what do you believe in a life in life purpose? And if you do, do you have one? Uh, I absolutely believe in life purpose. I don't. What I don't believe in is that there's just one. Oh, yeah, I agree. I believe in your life purpose for the moment. <laughs> and um, I do have one right now. And right now it is, well, I'm at this retreat. Okay. So it literally has mm -hmm. been shifting for a while. Okay. Um, and it's just gotten a lot more solidified, I guess, mm -hmm. literally while I'm here. Okay. Cause I've been trying to move into a, a much more spiritual space with my work. I'm, you know, I'm a business coach right now and I do a lot of like, spirituality inside of my business coaching, but I sort of want yeah. to expand on the spirituality side. Yeah. So um, what my purpose is now I'm stepping into in a brand new way is to help people experience love in their life in the true sense of love. And I don't mean romantic love. Romantic mm -hmm. love is a very, very small piece of what I believe love actually is. Totally. And so my, the purpose I'm stepping into now <laughs> is more of that, is to help people embrace the biggest aspects of love in their life, both for themselves primarily and for others. And, and again, romantic love is, you know, we look at love like this, when love is actually like this. <laughs> It's right? True. There's such this bigger spectrum of what actually love is. And so I have this big desire to talk about that in a bigger way. I love it. Totally, totally yeah. love it. Yes. So what do you believe the world needs more of? And love. why? <laughs> love. That is literally what I think the world needs more of. You see, we see right now, especially in the States, yeah. what happens when ego takes over, we are, we have collectively manifested in the United yeah. States, 100% ego. And that, that, that poor man, when I look inside his chest, when I look inside our president's chest and I look at his heart, I see this tiny little shriveled, sad, sad little thing. I actually feel I don't believe in any of his politics, but as a human, I feel very sad for him. Yeah, no, because, yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. And that is one thing that I have learned myself is that when somebody is kind of spewing hate and being very vengeful and stuff like that, and I'm not just talking about him because he's not the only one, and I'm not even talking about anybody particular, but it's just that in, in my life, what I've experienced is that, wow, this person is like this wooden child who hasn't healed. Yeah, it actually makes me really sad. It makes yeah, me really. Like, yeah, it's like this person is like, um, they're, they're suffering, yeah. you know? because really it's people who are suffering. And that's why for me, I often say that as much as I am very much one of those who can, you know, who will speak, you know, you know, well, I don't like to use the word against, but speak stands for what he's not for. Yeah. I still believe in sending love and life to him and praying for him, an example, and other people who show up a certain way, because really um, what these people need is love. Yeah. Because the shame that, you know, hating them back is not going to help. Right. That's <laughs> just not them. a solution. Right. <laughs> because what has happened, but I also think that in a way, you know, I know not everyone may agree with that, but I often say that I truly believe that in some way we manifested this because he's a mirror of part of oh. us. I just said it. You may know. I totally agree. We collectively as a country manifested yeah. that everyone has to take responsibility. Even if you agree with him or not, we yeah. are all in it together. Right. Yes. I totally agree with you. And I think hate begets more hate. It's not like yeah. any war has solved things. No. Right. And so like, it just feels like my only way to help. Totally. 
Totally. And that's why, I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but that's why I also think that, like, for me, I really resonate with people like Marianne Williamson, who are still very much outspoken, but they tell you, we need to come from a place of love. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's like how, and I think sometimes we, we have this mentality that when we don't agree with each other or when it involves politics or even talk things like social justice, that we have to come from a place of, you either with me or against me, or I, if, if, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Like, there's no, we can disagree. We can agree to disagree. Right. But All that so, gets us so, is swinging so one way. Yeah. Right. It gets us swinging one way, and then we swing yeah. the other way. And then those people are mad, and then we swing, and then we're going to keep getting this until we can come back together in the middle, right? There's yeah. that, and I'm not saying I have the political solution. I certainly yeah, don't. Yeah, I don't. Hate is not going to solve it. And it's so funny because we think if we just, I I say this all the time, if we just rearrange the deck chairs out here, we can fix things. That's, this is always a reflection of this. Yeah. This, your heart, whatever you think, like what if, you know, you always get back what you're putting out there. Like I said, it is literally a universal law. So if you, if you're finding people are not nice to you, if you're not getting what you want, if you um, struggle, if you're frustrated, moving jobs or moving to another country, or that's not really <laughs> rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, right? It's, 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 you got to go in, right? It, you, totally. you have to go in. And I think it's so easy to think that if you're in an unhappy relationship to just end the relationship, or if you're in an unhappy job to just quit the job, if you just like swipe these things out of our lives. And I'm not saying like, God, if you're in an abusive relationship, I'm not saying anything like that. Yeah, totally. But what I'm saying is that if you are struggling, and I did this by the way, I changed my life. I got divorced. I moved to Chicago. I started acting. I changed a lot of things. Problem was, I took me with me. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I mean, people, people leave, exactly like you said, you move, people leave their state, they leave, you know, because they're like running away. But what, like you said, I it, did it. you took I you. you. Did it. Mm-hmm. That's how I know it doesn't work. Yeah. Literally, I know it doesn't work because I did it. And so I kept recreating unhappy relationships wherever I was. I was still unhappy with my job, even though I had a completely new one, right? So I want to, my, my purpose feels like it's showing people that it's not this that matters. It needs to be this first and dealing with your mind first. Mm-hmm. And then all of this stuff starts to work itself out. I'm literally proof of that. And I know many other people who are. Yeah. So I think it's because we live in such a physical, you know, you and I are coaches and we're all energy and wooey wooey. And I love that stuff. Right. But so yeah. many people aren't and they don't know. They don't understand that if you change all of this, it doesn't really matter until you change this. Mm hmm. And so that's now what I'm going to be getting loud about. Totally. Thank you. So great. So that um, that concludes the interview part. Misty, I want you to tell people a little bit more about your work, where they can connect you. And I also know you have a free gift for them. So Yes, absolutely. I do. Absolutely. Yes, I totally do. And as a matter of fact, I just changed my free gift because it's even better. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, (laughs) Okay, great. So... Um, what you've been hearing about my work now, I'm also a business coach, but I, and I've been doing business coach. Well, I've been in business for, oh God. Oh God. I can't believe I'm going to say this number. 26 years. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> so I was in advertising for 20 years before. And then I've been in a coach for the last six years. And, um, okay. That's my work up until now. And now I'm shifting into this other sort of I've really been talking about spirituality for a long time, but I'm shifting into more of this work now. Um, You can find out more about me at mistypatrella.com. So it's M-I-S-T-I-P-A-T-R-E-L-L-A. 
Um, but my gift, because I moving into this work in a more official way is so brand new, I actually really need to talk to people. So I'm doing 30. So if you see this, I'm doing 30 of them. Okay. I'm doing 30 conversations with um, women about love. And I, it can be romantic love, okay? But it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be romantic love. It could be loving yourself. It could be fear of love. It could be love with your sister or your dad who drives you crazy. Or it doesn't even really matter what kind of love, okay? But I actually really want to talk to 30 women about it um, mm -hmm. because I need some consensus. So if you are interested in one of these sessions, it's an hour long and it's just a conversation and I'm not selling anything, okay? I'm not even gonna sell you anything. I'm not gonna mention selling anything. It's not about that. I actually really just need the research, okay? So um, if you want one of these, you can just email me very, very simply at misty at coachmisty.com. So it's M-I-S-T-I at coach, M-I-S-T-I dot com. Very simple. I would love to talk to you. Okay, great. Thank you. And like everybody, just so you guys know, all her info and the email I'll be posting, she'll send me the information. Yes. Everything will be below the video. And if you're listening to us through iTunes, you will, you know, or, which is now called Apple Podcast. That's you right. Can, I changed it, didn't they? I just heard about that. <laughs> to us and also you can um you can visit my website www.lovelikecoaching.com where you can see all misty's info and where you know her social media pages where you can connect with her and um and if you enjoyed this thank you so much misty for yes, um, thank you Najeda. i'm so happy we got to connect yeah and thank you all i hope you find it helpful i hope you will go ahead and pick her up on her come on her love conversation that sounds Please very do. i would love to speak with you yeah actually i was just thinking I, I think i might just take you up on that myself you should mama i would love to talk to you <laughs> yes, yes so if you enjoyed this and you don't want to miss any other episode please um subscribe to my email list below this video there's the box where you put in your name your email address every Thursday when I come up with a new, when I have a new episode, I shared it with my, it'll be in your inbox. Also, you'll get, when you subscribe, you'll get my free gift, which is seven questions to help you reconnect with yourself and have an aligned message in your business, which is so important. And also every Tuesday, you get an email from me and I'm coming up with even more stuff to share. So um, you'll get tips and inspiration from me. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, leave us a review, leave us comments below the video. Until next time, love and light. Thank you again, Misty. Thank you. Mwah.